here together, we have the opportunity to watch one of the best traders in the world right now, taking a trade live in the time and explaining the reasons of entry, the take profits and the reason where the invalidation stop loss is placed. This is heavily based on order flow knowledge and insights. So I think you're going to learn a lot from this one. And this is known as the trade recaps. Every single week, several times a week, this is posted over on the chartchampions.com platform. The video I'll be sharing with you now is the recap from Coach Severin and traded on the NQ. The theory is used the same across all markets, and this is a futures market that Severin absolutely crushes, along with the altcoins, right? Um, so yeah, the way this works is the screen is recorded live in the time as he's taking his trade, and then he will voice over, you know, in a more calm environment, the reasons uh, as that trade was taken live in the time, you know, the thought process that was going on, and, you know, really explaining so he can educate you and, you know, let him, let you get into his head of how he is viewing that order flow and market and making, wow, just wonderful trading decisions day after day and profits on profits. Hope that you really enjoy this one and yeah, pay attention. It will really help you. Thank you. Hello everyone and welcome to another trade recap. So here we are looking at one of my trades I took on Monday, I think, and that was a more of an aggressive trade where we approached the overnight low. And in this case, I wasn't waiting for a five minute close before I entered this trade. What I did though was wait for one minute candle closes above. Okay, so when we start the video, we can see we are only two minutes left in this five minute candle. So that means one minute candles already closed above. Okay, so that was a bit more aggressive. What I liked here was these aggressive long trades. Okay, so that was a wrong limit order there, by the way, but um, my stop loss was fairly wide, so I gave myself a bit of room here. Um, what I was acknowledging in this trade was this right here, okay? So when we look at the volume profile on the ES, they, it, so in general, it looked like a bit weakness, right? So we retested this old value area low into resistance, but what I was seeing down here was that we SFP'd every low so far, okay? And in this case, my confluence level was the overnight low and I was expecting something similar for at least a quick scalp trade, okay? That's why I hit a quick take profit one here, as you can see on the value area low point of control retest, and then I instantly moved my stop loss back to entry or up to entry, okay? So um, there was a bit of a risk of choking this trade, but um, for me it was still worth risking this trade because um, yeah, even within this one minute, I think that was already 250 profits on these two um, two TPs I took there or two contracts I took as a take profit. Um, what I have to acknowledge in this trade is that I might get stopped out in the new five minute candle, but if that happens, I am more than happy to re-enter this trade if we close this five minute candle above the overnight low, okay? Because as you know, typically I like to see a scenario where we close the five minute candle above, then see the retest in the following five minute candle, I can, and then I can jump into a nice long trade. Okay, but in this case, I was a bit more aggressive. I didn't want to miss the movie because I really like this reaction and we can see that we see some larger longs piling in there. So that's quite interesting. And there's also a new lesson which I'm going to release. I don't know the date yet, but I will release a new lesson where I'm covering my more aggressive entries as we can see here, okay? Where I don't use the five minute candle close strategy, okay? So um, that was now a very nice candle close. We can see that we, yeah, closed fairly, um, yeah, within a decent range above over above the overnight low. Price now has the potential to reclaim the value area low and point of control. And what I see most of the time, if we claim the point of control, like in this scenario right here, it pops for at least a few ticks, okay? And that is exactly what's happening here. So you can see once price is reclaiming the value area low and point of control, you see a nice move to the upside. And um, yeah, that is exactly what I was expecting here and why I was a bit more aggressive on this trade. So um, I decided to split my take profits here, okay? Because 
I wanted to take two more contracts of these three uh, contracts I'm still in and leave one runner, which I would only close on a sign of weakness. Okay. So, um, yeah, in, in this trade, I was in a really comfortable position because the entry was pretty far away now with that move to the upside. So I wasn't really um, afraid that I might get stopped at break even here because um, to be honest if we were to revisit my entry now after seeing this bounce to the upside I would um, yeah think to myself that it's more probable to take the low once more maybe do another one minute SFE or something but at least take the low once more because you really don't want to see that value area low being lost again okay so um, yeah that was my approach in this trade. We can skip a little bit. I was moving my, so one of my take profits a little bit lower. And the reason for this is this large, um, yeah, we can call it node, although we already had a lot of volume established. So it's not really showing up here. But when you zoom into this five minute candle, you can see that around this price level, there are yeah, more or less 10,000 contracts traded here. So typically that is, or I personally like to at least take a take profit at these areas because there's always the potential that a bit of resistance is coming in here because people like to exit their positions at these price levels. Okay, so um, yeah, reducing my stop loss here, only two contracts left. I'm interested in taking another take profit here on the VWAP. And then, as I already said, leave a runner or close on weakness. At the same time, what was um, aiding to this trade, uh, so to speak, is that the Nasdaq is also or was approaching this uh, daily value area low. And what I liked here, so when we look at this, that in my opinion, although I didn't take it myself, was a nice trade as well. Because we can see that was support, support in London session. Then we flipped it into resistance. So that is a nice support and resistance flip. Then we broke above that level again, and now we back tested this level to support again. So you can draw a simple box here and see how this acted as support and resistance, okay? So that was another layer of confluence for me taking this trade, but I was already in a decent trade here with five contracts, which is, yeah, quite okay. Um, so I didn't really feel the need to take another trade on the Nasdaq because um, as I covered in my correlations lesson, I also don't really like to over leverage myself because say you get stopped out on the ES, there's a high probability of getting stopped out on the Nasdaq as well or vice versa, obviously. So sometimes it makes sense to stick with trading one asset only, especially when you use a bit of an increased position size like I did here. Okay, so if I was only trading on one contract, for example, I would definitely take both trades. But here on five contracts, we can see even with uh, two contracts, still 600 profit here. So that is, um, yeah, that is enough for a trade, for a scalp trade. Okay. So here we um, now hit my take profit too, okay? So um, yeah, what I wanted to do next is to simply um, leave a runner or close on weakness, okay? So what's gonna be interesting to see is if we flip this VWAP or do get a nice rejection here, okay? So it's really nice that we did that right at the um, new five minute open. We can see not the best follow through here, Okay, and what I'm thinking about next is to closing this trade and we can see something really nice here. So the same scenario we had here in a bullish retest, for example, we had the same here on the ES. Okay, so when we see support, support that fl flipped into the resistance, then we flip that into support again, lost it again, and we are now yeah, retesting this area. So it's always good to be prepared and protected to at least take a uh, take profit. Or if you see some follow through or weakness to the downside, definitely close this trade because there's a high probability of rejecting here. Okay, but for now, remaining a bit more patient, if I see another move to the downside, I, uh, I am closing this trade. Okay, so um, yeah. 
In order for us to break the view up, we definitely need more. We can see that the largest orders in this five minute candle currently are sell orders, okay? So if you want to see follow through above the view up, there need to be a few more longs coming in, okay? I was already checking for if we break it, what's my next target gonna be? Because this, in this case, would have been the daily value area high, which is in confluence with the time point of control. But um, yeah, that would have obviously only happened if we flipped the VWAP, which if I remember correctly, didn't happen and I closed manually. So at the same time, the NASDAQ is now also approaching the value area high. That is also something to take into consideration, okay, because um, typically you get a nice heads up if you monitor the nest, I can see what it does. You get, Yeah, I personally like to translate or relate that to the ES because typically the nest egg moves a bit faster or moves before the ES starts moving, okay? So we do see a bit of traction here above the view up, but nothing too special. Now the time point of control shifted to the downside slightly, okay? So um, still my finger is always on the trigger to close this trade manually because I'm very happy. I mean, that is one contract only, still $525 profit, okay? So that is not too bad for one runner, in my opinion. Interesting to see that even above the view up, we see some large shorts piling in there, which I would already consider as a bit of a sign of weakness. And it's going to be very interesting. So I'm uh, personally remaining in this trade till we close this five minute candle because there is a potential of closing above the view up, which would look a bit more bullish, but closing below would be, yeah, indicating a bit more weakness since we are or, um, also approached a nice level of resistance being the daily time point of control. So, um, yeah, Th that's typically how I like to manage a trade when I have a runner open. Okay, I'm not too aggressive with the last take profit, so you can see um, I didn't close up here because I want to see the weakness, okay, because I would have a bit of room so we could retest the point of control, but I personally, when I see this up here and then see the five minute candle close below, yeah, I'm personally more interested in locking the remaining profits and potentially get into a new trade, okay? Mm, even if you trade, even if you close a trade too early, so to speak, that doesn't mean that you can't re-enter at a different time, okay? So 10 more seconds to go in this five minute candle. Nasdaq is also um, rejecting here on the daily value area high, so it makes sense that both assets are on a bit of a pullback here locally. And here we can see the new five minute open, and that is where I close this trade, okay? So I hope that made sense because I was just not really confident in holding on to this trade after this close. You can see there was a nice wick to the upside, some trap traders up here. You see some larger shorts piling in. You can see that here, 2000 sell block, 1100 sell block. So for me, it was just um, yeah worth um, securing the remaining, what was it, 350 profit or something and be good with that. So that is all for this trade recap. I hope you all enjoyed. If there's anything you didn't understand or want me to clarify, please let me know. And yeah, I hope you all enjoyed and see you next time. Goodbye. I hope that you thoroughly enjoyed that trade recap. And if you want to see more of that or you found something confusing and you want to understand the ins and outs of that trade setup, everything is taught over via Chart Champions in the course. You can learn every single thing about that setup and strategy used. Thank you ever so much and I'll see you over on the platform.
sharkchampions.com.